Hello and welcome. Right now we are going to talk about variable scopes inside of Ruby. We're going to need this for some of our exercises as well as uh, what we're going to be talking about in the rest of class. So just follow along. Uh, where you define variables inside of your code matters. Um, obviously uh, top and bottom, but also the, the context. So whether we put it inside of a method or outside of the method. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Here we have an example of setting a variable called movies to an array of strings. So the first string is Zoolander, the second string is Sandlot. Then we have our method definition of good movies, so def good movies. And inside of that, we are using uh, movies.each, which is the each method on the array movies. And for each of those, we are, we are putting I like and then falling back to the string of movie. Uh, so below the method definition, we're actually calling the method. So in, in your mind, what do you think is going to happen when we run this? And I'll, and I'll give you a hint. It's probably not what you think it is. All right, uh, time is up. Whenever you call this method, we will get, oh no, we're going to get a undefined local variable or method error. It, it says it doesn't know what, uh, what movie is. So it, if you look at this, we are actually defining movies outside of the context of our method. So we're defining it outside of good movies. So when we actually get into the method, it, it says it doesn't have a movies variable. So how could we fix this? Oh, also, just the, uh, the technical term, the terminology we'll use is uh, movies is going to be out of scope. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about how to define scope mentally and sort of, uh, sort of you know, what that is. But uh, here's one way that we could fix that. So we could just take that variable assignment and move it into our method. So here we have the movies still equal to a array of strings, Zoolander and Sandlot, but since it's inside of our method, it now, good movies now understands and knows what that movies variable is, so that works. So that's uh, that's one way we could fix this. But uh, I said we're going to talk about scope, and we, we haven't really. Um, we have uh, different types of variables with different types of scope. We have been using two of them already. Uh, we've been using local variables, so in this Example, a cow is our variable. It is a local variable because it is all lowercase, and it is equal to the string of moo. We also have constants. So we've been using these. We haven't actually put a name to them before. A constant, the, the first letter is going to be capitalized. So user, whenever you say class user, then it is a constant. All class names have to be constants. We can also use constants for other things. Um, so user is an example of a constant or capital active record is also an example of a constant inside of Ruby. So there is a new type of variable we're going to be using today that we haven't really explored before. It is called an instance variable. So an instance variable starts with an at. So at cow equals a string of moo is an instance variable. Um, and as I'm talking, you might hear me refer to it as the instance variable cow, or you might hear me refer to it as at cow. Um, both of those things mean the same thing. So if I'm introducing this now, eh, it probably means we're getting ready to go ahead and use it. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and move back to that example we just took a look at. So we were using a local variable here, and a local variable has the least scope. It has a very, very small scope. Uh, so whenever we try to use it at inside of a, a method, if we didn't define it inside of that method, then we're going to get a name error. So we, we saw previously how we could just move the, uh, the, the variable assignment and have this work, but we can also change the scope of our variable and have it work. So here, if we change that local variable to an instance variable, then we can use it inside of our method. So that would be one way to, one way to fix that um, problem. And uh, we would say that an instance variable has greater scope. Uh, usually in my head, if I want to know, hey, where, where does scope change? Um, in, we saw that 
uh, the scope was slightly different inside and outside of that method. So I like to just mentally look for the end keywords. So here's kind of some examples of scope changes. We uh, might have a different scope inside of a method, so def foo. Also inside of a do end block, as well as a class definition. So we've got class, uh, user, end, and then maybe inside of a module. So we've got a module, something, and end. So those are all good indicators of uh, scope change. So if you are getting a, if you're getting a, you know, undefined method error and, but you can, you know, you can clearly, clearly see that you have that variable, uh, then it might be a good indicator that um, maybe your variable is out of scope. So you can try moving it around just a little bit. Uh, and one, uh, one, I guess, nice exercise or way to think about this is imagine a world if we only had global scope. So, um, you know, every single method you, you ever called modified every single variable in your entire project. Um, it would be really, really difficult to deal with. It's, it's nice to have this little isolation. So uh, things inside of your method only apply to the variables inside of your method if they're local variables. Uh, so that, that is one way we can help keep our project a little nicer, a little cleaner, a little easier to debug. Uh, and I've been using this word scope. Generally, the more things that can use a variable, the greater the scope of that variable. So we saw previously we had the local variable movies, and we could only use that outside of the... Uh, outside of our method definition, or when we moved it inside of the method definition, we could only use it inside of the method definition. So there's very few places we could use that, so we would say that it has very small scope. When we switched over to the instance variable, we saw that we could use it inside or outside of the method definition, and that means it's got very a little bit larger of a scope. Uh, we talked about constants. Constants have a much, much larger scope than either of those two. In general, it's a good practice to always use the lowest scope possible. Otherwise, you'll run into an, to, uh, difficult to debug issues and problems where you, if, if, again, if everything was global in your program, then it would be difficult to understand the state and understand what's, what's going on. Uh, in general, as you're programming, it's going to be really, really tempting. You're going to get those errors, and it's going to say, we don't know what this variable is. It's going to be really tempting to just put an at in front of all of those and say, you know, oh, you know, okay, that's going to fix that. Uh, in general, don't, don't do that. Actually try to go in, explore, figure out why the scope is different than you thought it was. Uh, maybe move your variables around um, and try it out in a couple of different ways in in general, we said you want to use the lowest scope possible, and local variables have the lowest scope. So if you uh, also, if you just have a bunch of instance variables, if you have at in front of everything, then it's going to kind of clutter up your code, and it's not going to look nearly as nice. Uh, you know, maybe that doesn't matter to you at this point, but uh, in the future it will. So, uh, you know, that is some good uh, good tips on um, scope. And next we're going to be talking about uh, Rails controllers in depth, and we just needed this little segment to uh, to help us out when we are moving some SQL from our views to our controllers. So if you're interested in that, stick around.